Catechist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechist.com. It's my great pleasure to be speaking with um, Foghat lead singer uh, Charlie Hoon. How you doing today, Charlie? Very well, thank you, Jason. Uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. And um, we're going to be talking about the new Foghat CD, of course, um, eight, eight Days on the Road. And um, right off back, Charlie, I was curious, um, why did you um, guys decide to pick that kind of as a title track? I think it's a great... Um, track for a simple fact it's like a great road song like you know it's a great life song is that kind of why you guys picked it yeah pretty much um actually I, they got it wrong it should be eighty thousand days on the yeah road. yeah 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 <laughs> but, uh yeah you know we we just went with that it's a, a fun tune and um you know typical fog hat road song uh can't get enough of those right yeah yeah and, but um you know a good up-tempo uh tune with with a lot of breaks and and changes in it and uh you know just kind of keeps the momentum going in the set and yeah. uh so that's basically the reason and, and you know i gotta tell people it's a nice little package i got the cd myself and um you're gonna get all the favorite uh, Fog Hat tunes you love, like you know, Slow Ride and Just Want to Make Love to You. But what I really dig about this package is, I mean, there are tunes on here um, that I never really heard. Heard. I mean, uh, one of the tunes I heard, like Home in My Hand. I'm hearing that for the first time. Really loving that one. Oh, cool! Yeah, you know, that was um, one of the staples, uh, you know, back in the day, yeah. and 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 it's fun to revisit that. Um, it's one of the more popular uh, unknown Foghat songs, if I can say that. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a great driving tune that uh, that has the, uh, you know, the, the old uh, classic uh, chord structures, uh, like, you know, uh, early 70s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rolling Stones-ish and, and uh, you know, the, the great uh, classic uh, kind of chord progressions and, and uh, the three-part harmonies, which uh, every time we play it and I hear the three-part harmonies, I go, God, I didn't know those guys could sing so well. Yeah, and, and you know what's, uh, what's funny is um, th this album's being released at a time when it's really in celebration of Foghat's 50th anniversary. I mean, uh, I got to tell you, yeah. Charlie, both Foghat and uh, myself came into the world in 1971, so uh -huh. I, am, I am loving this. And um, the, the interesting thing... Awesome. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Foghat is you guys are one of those classic rock bands that not only do you have those great classic tunes we all know and love, but like people are still discovering a lot of this great music for the first time. Sure, and, and that's wonderful because um, we we like bringing on board the uh, younger generations, and um, you know, hats off to them for for discovering us, and uh, you know, it's fun to share the history. Yeah. and, and uh, see the excitement. Uh, a lot of the younger kids um, could have been conceived to slow ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know, but, um, yeah. you know, it's like um, if, if they if they did uh, enough research, they'd find out that slow ride was the number one gentleman's song, gentleman's club song for about twenty years, along with uh, "Girls, Girls, Girls" by Motley Crue. Interesting, and. Um, <laughs> And Charlie, you you guys a few years ago re-recorded a new version of um, a slow ride with you on it. What was that like? In a chance to um, put your oh, staple yeah, on that? That was fun, you know. That was a uh, in the studio. That was our last studio album, um, and uh, we tuned down a half a step because a lot of Lonesome Dave's vocals were so high. Yeah. And uh, you know, I can handle it, but you know, um, like when we recorded Slow Ride in the studio, it was in A440, which is regular A pitch, and and uh, just before I went in and started recording, I, I thought, "Oh man, am I going to be able to do this?" And and uh, you know, I got through it, but it was it was really stretching. And so it's interesting how that half a step can make so much difference. But you know, uh, it turned out great. Oh yeah, I, I think so. Now let, let me ask you, Charlie. Before you were in the band, um, what was your history as um, a Foghead fan? I mean, were you much into the band, or did you get more into oh, the band once you? Sure. Um, well, I was a Foghat band a fan before Foghat because um, I liked those guys when they were in Savoy Brown. Oh wow! And, yeah, yeah. I used to follow them. I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I would drive to Detroit or Chicago to see Savoy Brown with Chris Yolden singing. Yeah. And you know, I recommend highly everybody revisiting that lineup. You know, with Kim Simmons, of course, in guitar. guitar. But um, then when they uh, split in 70 and uh, recorded their album in Wales and, and then came over to the States, 
uh, in 71 that first album came out like you said and and that uh, version of I Just Want to Make Love to You was you know one of my favorite tunes and, and a turn a turntable hit they used to call them. yeah I, and yeah go, I, I'm yeah, with so you I, yeah. yeah, you know, um, I just really enjoyed them. But ironically, I'd never seen a band. And even when I was touring with Ted Nugent and playing these mega festivals and um, arena shows and stadium shows, we never worked with Foghat. Wow. And I had never seen the band until 98 when I opened up for them in Toledo when I was in Humble Pie. Wow. And that was the first time they ever saw me. And, and that was how they knew... Um, uh, to think of me when it came time uh, to look for uh, a new singer, a singer. Yeah. And, and you know um, j I just want to make love to you you know it's, um, people kind of think that of that as a disco song and it was a big hit for Fox Hat back in the days but I will tell you they did such a great uh, uh, job of putting their stamp yeah. on that song because a lot exactly. of people like myself um, I was surprised to learn oh wait a minute that's a Willie Dixon tune exactly yeah it's and, and the original is, is like a shuffle yeah. And so that's a different drum beat for people that don't understand. And and so having this driving rock beat um, version, and then with the the brilliant uh, engineering and production skills of um, uh, oh god, his name just slipped my that's mind. That's all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, those guitars are stacked so beautifully, and they and they sound so awesome. Um, Dave Edmonds, that's who it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, it just you know it pops off of off of the um, out of the speakers, and it's just such a cool tune. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give you props, Charlie, because I think you know it's interesting. A lot of bands have trouble, you know, especially when they replace a lead uh, lead singer like that. And um, I think part of the reason people are so um, accepting of Foghead is you know when when a um, when a member dies in the band, it's kind of different. You know, you didn't leave you know because they were not getting along or something, but. Um, You've done a great job of helping the band kind of carry on. I mean, you seem to be the perfect front man. You've been there for several years now. I think over 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And it's been a challenge, um, you know, my whole uh, professional career. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of filling shoes. And, and um, it, it's been a, a, a real joy to be able to, to be successful at it. You know, and, and I work hard at it. And, and so... Um, it's uh, it, it's an honor to do it. And I, I got to tell you, I was surprised when um, I was reading up on you last night and prepping for the interview. And um, I won't I won't reveal your age, but I'll just say if people really knew oh. your age. Um, they'd be quite surprised. I mean, you look like a man half your age. <laughs> oh, aren't you nice? Thank you very much, bro. And I appreciate it. You know, trying to stay in shape. And yeah. I'm going for a 20 mile bike ride right after this. So. Oh wow. And. Um, yeah, so again, and, and the packaging for the new CD is really cool. I mean, I dig the fact that not only do we get like a, a double great live CD, but you included the um, DVD with it. I mean, a, a visual, which I always kind of dig. You know, you get the visual and the audio experience. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, definitely better and more for the uh, the purchaser and, and the listener and the viewer. And um, I'll send along the compliments to... Uh, Linda and Brian, um, yeah. uh, Linda, our uh, manager, uh, does a, a lot of the uh, IT work, and, and Brian does the engineering uh, and producing uh, of our uh, audio. And that club was awesome, though, because it had in-house audio and visual equipment with a crew and everything, so that was a no-brainer to go in yeah. and, and film and record. Now, did you guys know right ahead that you were going to be releasing it, or was once the recording was done oh. and you seen how flawless yeah. it was? We uh, got permission to uh, use the facilities, so we figured if, if it turned out well that we would consider releasing it, and we were happy that it did. So that's that's why we've been working on this through the pandemic. Yeah, and, and you know, like I know um, you've been on a couple other Foghat live albums, but I mean, the last one was the Belly Up, which I think um, kind of really uh -huh. stood out on its own. But this is a nice little package because it's kind of a, like I said, it's a 50th year kind of anniversary of Foghat sure. that you guys are celebrating. And people that don't know some of these tunes are hearing them for the first time. And again, I, I think um, sometimes you know if you get if something's nicely packaged, you you don't mind spending a little bit of money on it. And and I think that's the case with this. And I got mine like on Amazon, um, and oh, and it wasn't that much, you know. So um, I think if you're a Foghead fan, you're gonna really enjoy this. 
Well, that's awesome. I appreciate that. And yeah, you know, uh, we try to keep it uh, cost effective and, and get the best product out there. Uh, you know, that reminds me that we're starting to write already for uh, another studio album yeah. that we'll probably put out next year. So it's, uh, it's never ending. And how far are you guys into that? I mean, are you just starting to write or have you been writing all yeah. throughout the... We're just starting to write, but uh, it's always uh, a pleasure to get together and jam. You know, Roger will start a drum beat and then, you know, the, the chords just fall out of your sleeve and, and a song is born. You know, it, it's, it's really fun to everybody get together and collaborate. And see, you know, I got to also get, guy, give you guys props because, you know, Foghead is one of those great classic bands that you guys... Um, you, you probably could have been one of those bands to just kind of live on the band's catalog of music, but I dig the fact that you've kind of also put your own stamp on Foghat, you know, doing a couple of albums with the band, and um, and that just shows that th this band's got talent still, you know, within, and you're not, not just relying on those classic tunes. Yeah, thanks, you know, and that's um, something that I've always uh, been proud of is, is the fact that uh, everybody continually likes to create and put out uh, new material and it keeps the band fresh and and like you said shows the uh, versatility and, and creative aspects and i think you guys got a great lineup i mean with the with the band now i mean um anybody with a foghead fan of course knows the legendary roger earl and what a great drummer he is but i mean um you and the other guys in the band i think really helped to keep it fresh you know Oh, thanks. Yeah, Brian Bassett on lead and slide guitar and vocals, uh, he's amazing. Um, he, he's just so uh, accurate and, and strong as a player um, that, you know, I compliment him all the time, it, it, that it's, it's just wonderful to be on stage with a guy that is, is uh, so um, accurate and powerful, and it, it, it's just wonderful. And then the same with Rodney O'Quinn on bass. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's... Uh, a uh, real solid bass player and um, uh, high quality, you know, uh, professional, and, it, and it's wonderful. Uh, it just really motivates you, and, and it, it relaxes you at the same time to be able to concentrate on what you do and not have to worry about fighting uh, it, the, the music, you know, it just like um, it becomes one. Yeah, a bit, uh, I mean, the best compliment I can give to you guys, when watching the DVD um, portion of it, um, I was having trouble just visually, like, okay, who's the lead guitar player? Of course, you know, in the credits says Charlie Hoon, but, I mean, you guys are both flashy players. You know, I mean, as, as great of a singer you are, Charlie, I mean, your guitar playing is right there. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've taken pride in that, and, uh, you know, it, it's a continual work in progress. Um, it, but uh, just to reiterate how amazed I am at Brian, that guy never makes a mistake. Wow. I, I've told him that I, I want him to pay me five bucks if he ever makes a mistake, and I've never collected yet. Oh, wow, wow. And, <laughs> and, and you know, I was reading, this is very interesting for people listening to this, um, um, I was reading that you started your musical training like, really at like about four years old started playing the piano and guitar is that correct yeah i was uh you know sat on a piano at four and given um classical uh piano lessons for you know eight to ten years and then taught myself how to play guitar and uh my mom was a singer uh in church choirs and a soloist and yeah. and possibly trained in college so in opera like so so i I got the singing gene and had perfect pitch by like sixth grade. So, you know, I always wanted to be a rock and roll singer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ever since I was six years old. So, um, it just uh, it was inevitable, I guess. And that, that's another thing that makes you perfect for a band like this is because if you listen to any Foghat music, I mean, Foghat's one of those bands, um, as great of um, a rock band you guys are, I mean, it's really a combination of rock and blues, and you seem sure. like the perfect guy for that. <laughs> Oh, thanks, man, and and Boogie too, and yeah. you know it, it's great the blues influence in the uh, rock music that Foghat uh, is famous for is is right up my alley, and I've always been a big fan of of that style of, of rock music, you know, and and uh, so it's a perfect fit. And did you like you said you always kind of knew you wanted to be a singer, but I was curious like when you first got into music and you first started playing, um, was it more a fact of um, like a lot of people you probably wanted to write your own original tunes, and you're like. I don't think I can get anybody else to kind of sing my songs the way I want to hear them sung. Well, um, I don't, I didn't really get into writing. Um, I was a little 
shy about that early on and so it, it um my writing didn't really uh and what do you call it uh open up until like my late 20s okay and then yeah but then you know writing uh with gary moore yeah. uh, on the dirty fingers album was just wonderful uh because he was such an influence and and it came so effortless effortlessly for him so um that, that was a big uh morale booster so uh yeah you know i just was more concentrating growing up on on playing and singing at the same time yeah which is quite a challenge and and uh you know it didn't come easily so yeah. i just put in the, the hours and the days yeah that's a very good point you know and um I, of course, um, as many people know, your first big break was really um, back in 1978 when you joined the Ted Nugent Band. Now, um, and and on the title track of Weekend Warrior, you, you get to do the lead vocal. I mean, um, what was that like to first of all join the uh, Ted Nugent Band and then to actually get to sing, you know, lead vocal on that album? Yeah, yeah. What a um, what kudos uh, that was, and uh, you know, getting winning the audition uh, back in '77, and then. Uh, you know, joining the band and, and going right in the studio and recording Weekend Warriors that sold a million the first week it came yeah. out, and being the, the lead vocalist, you know, it's quite an honor. And and so, uh, you know, it was it was like jumping from the bars to the stars. You know, I, I yeah, got yeah. a call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, here I am uh, working with Tom Worman and Lou Futterman, uh, producers, and and at uh, Criteria Studio down in Miami, and you know, living on a, in a beach hotel for two months, and and you know, limos to every show, and, and first class airfare. It's just like it's a dream come true. So it, it was, you know, just totally awesome, especially playing in front of uh, stadiums, you know, with ninety thousand people in them, and, and uh, yeah. And initially, when you were hired, um, were you hired like as just a second guitar player? Because I know initially, like when Derek St. Holmes split, it was had a lot to do with the fact that Ted Nugent was singing more and more of the lead vocals, and Ted's kind of attitude was, "Well, I'm, you know, it's my band. They call it the Ted Nugent Band. I want to sing more." Um, so was it kind of his idea to have you sing, or was were you always? Well, actually, yeah, that uh, you know, I was hired as a lead singer and second guitarist. So. Okay. Uh, that's what Derek's role was. Yeah. You know, Derek was the lead singer, and and I think that was a deal that um, Ted had made with uh, Lou Futterman, the executive producer. That um, if he were to work with uh, Lou and uh, Epic Records, that he would need to have a lead singer, and so uh, that agreement uh, lasted uh, until um, toward the end of my career mm -hmm. and um, with Ted, and that's when uh, he. Uh, eight out of the ten lead vocals on the Wango Tango album. So, oh, okay. And um, yeah. and, and how, how long did you, I mean, how well did you get along with Ted? I mean, did you have a good relationship with him? Oh, yeah. We had a great relationship and, and uh, you know, made each other laugh all the time and, and uh, no problems whatsoever. It was a great learning experience. Yeah, and it seems like all through your career, you said you've been the guy, kind of go-to guy to replace all these legendary guys. I mean, um, not only Derek St. Holmes, but I mean, when you joined the Ted Nugent band, replacing him, did you feel that at the time the fans were pretty accepting of you? Uh, yes, uh, fortunately, and uh, that is always uh, semi-traumatic, you know, because yeah. you're you're pouring out your heart and soul and trying your best, and and uh, if uh, unfortunately the crowd might be a little purist and yeah, yeah. And, not be accepting of a change, and I can understand that too. You know, I I was that way with many bands. Yeah, yeah, and then but, but, yeah. yeah, it's been successful. So and then and then of course, I mean, um, as you mentioned, um, that when the opportunity to join Foghat came about, you were on tour with um, Humble Pie doing all those great Steve Marriott um, tunes. You know, yeah, that was the uh, the real challenge uh, of my singing career. Uh, in fact, I spent two weeks in a studio by myself. Yeah working you know all day long working on um, learning yeah. how Steve Marriott sang and he was one of my mentors anyway Paul Rogers and Steve Marriott you know are you kidding yeah yeah so, so it's like um, working and working on that and not to rip him off but but to get the nuances of, of his phrasing and things oh, like yeah. that learning the vocal acrobatics and, and and this may sound like a silly question but um 
was it hard, you know, being that, um, you know, Steve Mary was an English guy and had that deep accent having to learn some of those tunes or didn't really make a difference? Uh, it didn't really make a difference and it was fun getting to know him as well when uh, we were on the road together when I was with Ted and uh, uh, Humble Pie was opening up for us. We hung out together quite a lot yeah. and so it, it was really fun. And, and now, you know, all these years of um, fronting Foghat, um, have you... Have, has Foghead ever been on the same bill like as Ted Nugent? <laughs> uh, no, and that's what I was saying earlier, you know. I, it was so surprising to me that we were both, like, peaking at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And, and yet we had never worked together. But you see, Nugent was signed with um, uh, Lieber Krebs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Management agency out in New York City, and they had so many artists so many acts back then that they used to put on their own rock festivals with all their own artists oh yeah I mean, they had acdc def leopard scorpions ted nugent oh wow uh, there and, you. And the, the list just keeps going on and on and so we would we would just do festivals with all lieber krebs acts yeah and, and you know um like like so we're talking you've had quite the career yourself charlie um over, over years and um I was curious, as you know, you being such a great frontman and singer, um, did you ever have a desire to like um, do a solo album or have a solo career, put together your own project, or was it just a matter of these other opportunities came up instead? Uh, well, thank you for the compliments, yeah. and um, I had considered doing solo, and then I just figured, you know, it's almost like too much work, yeah, and, yeah. and so I, I just. Uh, you know, kept the position of, of working in a group um, instead of trying to venture out and do something by myself. And, and, yeah, that's, that's cool. And in, in regards to Fog, you know, like 50 years old, uh, and it seems like you guys are no, uh, even the pandemic can't slow you guys down. I mean, uh, <laughs> did, did that affect well, you guys as far as yeah, like life shows? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah, I'll never forget, man. That we were in uh, Las Vegas and just came out of California, and the first case uh, of of uh, COVID, COVID came, yeah. came into Vacaville, uh, California, and we had just been there like two days before. So it, it was chasing us out of the, the West, you know, yeah. back home, and then to shelter for 16 months, you know, so it's just so awesome to get back out. Yeah, so, so you guys are out back starting to do some more live shows now, is that correct? Yeah, we're uh, back out full swing playing, um, we're booked every weekend up until after Thanksgiving, and then we'll probably take a couple months off for the, uh, the winter. And, but uh, uh, yeah, um, in fact, we're going to be in Houston uh, Friday, and we were just in Chicago uh, two weeks ago, and uh, you know, just uh, hitting all over the place. So you living in Florida these days? Yeah, yeah, I've been in Florida now for 13 years, uh, uh, Central Florida, just north of Orlando, and. Yeah. Love it to death, you know, and uh, go golfing 365 days a year, so it's it's perfect. I mean, I mean, lucky you. Um, not to get too political, but I'll just say this: you know, I, I um, where I am right now is in California, and they're still trying to lock everybody down. So you guys got a little more freedom there. So so that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, bless you guys out there, and, yeah. and and so it's you know just something you have to deal with yeah yeah it's, it's part of life i guess as they say but yeah, um, you know everybody has to do their part i think so yeah and, and i guess the last question for a day charlie's um i see like um like a lot of the stuff you put out um the, the record company is in-house it's fog hat records so um like do you guys have um you have your own studio where you guys record is that correct yeah uh and that's uh, really the way to go is to have your own record company um, and and work at getting your own distribution uh, you can uh, make more money that way yeah, but yeah. also you can you can uh, over you can watch over the, the handling of your material so much better yeah because so, so many people will get a distribution company and then the that company won't do anything and, and so the artist is you know lost you know they're they're hands are tied uh, so it, it's always a challenge so if you can get out there and get your own record label going and, and be in charge of all of the um, workings that's really the way yeah, i mean Foghat's case i'll tell you i think the beautiful thing about it is uh, even with the latest um cd and dvd great packaging like i said and and i think the beautiful thing too mo mostly is like when, when you got when you're signed to somebody else's label 
you know they kind of tell you what you can and can't do or hey i don't hear it i don't hear a hit here go write me a radio hit um you don't have some guy in a suit who knows nothing about being in a band telling you what to do right right depending on you know your level of success yeah. um the stronger artists will have more uh eventual say in what goes on but yeah it's it's always challenging you know because uh, at any point in the chain of uh, of progress with with um you know um, intellectual property yeah. whether it's artwork or whether it's music or lyrics you know uh, there's something that could go wrong and you want to yeah. eliminate that yeah and, and you know I, I guess the very last thing i want to ask you because um the other track i really loved on here um talk about the whose decision was it to cover um play that funky music oh <laughs> well uh you know uh brian bassett was in wild cherry oh okay and, i wasn't aware of that yeah out of pittsburgh pennsylvania and and so you know he uh, he was part of writing that he wrote that riff and and oh. uh, you know that was an international number one hit. Yeah, there, there's so, a some foghead trivia for you that many fans might exactly. not exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you know Roger is quite uh, a, a charming uh, British gentleman, and his sense of humor is uh, only. Uh, yeah. Well, he, he, he said, let's just start playing it. And, and we always wanted to, but we never did. And so we finally did it, you know. And, and it was a challenge learning the lyrics and getting the phrasing going on some of that. And it took me kind of a while. I, was, I, I, mean, I, mean, I got to say, like like I said, Foghat's kind of a combination of uh, rock and blues and boogie, like you said. But, um, you know, now you're adding funk to the mix. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's fun to change things up. A because bit. I tell you, that's the one when I when I seen the video for that, you know, watching the DVD and the and I said, man, that that that's the track to me that really stands out, and, and that's saying something. Oh, that's cool. When you ended up well, when you ended up with slow ride, thinks. yeah, when you ended up with slow ride, which of course is ultimate foghat tune. I mean, I, I right. think it's right neck and neck with that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I appreciate that compliment, Jason. Well, um, you know, Charlie, I really enjoy take, uh, getting to know you. Um, uh, the interview will be going up probably next week. I'll let Amanda know once it does. But thanks for doing this, and maybe we can talk again down the line. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And if you'd ever like to come to a show, just um, you know, give me a shout, okay? I will do. And, um, and thanks for um, friending me on Facebook. But um, people can check you out on Facebook. Fog has got an official page. And I guess the very last thing we're going to let people know is, um, you know, they can buy this great package, but you can also go on... Um, YouTube and you guys got a video for um, for uh, Road Fever and um, and I, I believe one other track. Okay, yeah, slow ride. I'm not familiar. Slow but... ride, slow ride. That's what it is. Okay. Slow ride, perfect. Well, yeah, th thanks totally. again, Charlie. Take know. care, buddy. Okay, well, thank you, Jason. Bye, bye.